code signal, arcade, R similar. Hello everyone, I'll be solving this problem from code signal called R similar. So let's begin. Two arrays are similar if one can be obtained from another by swapping at most one pair of elements in one of the arrays. So given two arrays A and B, check whether they are similar. All right, so for example, one, two, three, one, two, three, they're the same and also in the same order, therefore it's true. Um, one, two, three, two, one, three. Um, you can see that at most you want to swap one and two, and that's only one swap, so it is still true. Now, if it's one, two, three, and two, one, one, you can see they're different elements. I mean, not there's not a pair for each of these elements, so therefore it should be false. Um, okay, we see the constraints. There's at least one for each of these arrays, and all right, let's begin. So I think something to consider, um, if they have to have at least one swap. Um, or actually, here's a better way. Here's some rules. Rules. They have to be the same length. If not the same length, um, then return false. Also, they have to have the same elements. So um, if one of them has one, two, two, and the other one has one, two, one, um, you can tell that one of them has has an odd pair of elements. Therefore, like elements that don't match. Therefore, um, it's not possible for any swapping to occur. Therefore, it should return false. All right. So here's what I have in mind. I did took a look into this, and well, I think here's how I should do it. One, compare each element per index, so compared to the zeroth spot, first spot, second spot, if um, a mismatch, we will need to, let's see here, first we need a, we need to create a stack um, to hold the index value of the mismatch. Also, we want to increment a counter of differences. All right. That's what happens if there's a mismatch. Um, let me see here if I could just move it up here. All right, and move it up here. But if um, afterwards, um, if another mismatch, use the stack index to compare whether a swap is possible. So we have the index of where the first difference occurs. If we see another difference, um, we'll compare the index from they to get from the stack, which is technically the original location of the first difference that occurred. We compare if those values match um, the, other, the current differences values, except um, they're swapped. Um, if there's no swapping occurring, they're just totally different elements, then it's definitely a, it's definitely not, definitely it breaks one of these rules that they, they don't have the same elements and therefore it should return false. And that's basically it actually. Um, I could start coding it and you guys could have a better idea of what is occurred. So if a dot length does not equal to b dot length, by the way, we want to return false. Uh, we want to create a stack of integers um, of the indexes. Excuse me. All right. Now we go through each of them. First, we create an index for zero. Index is less than a dot length. Index plus plus. All right. And um, Let's see here. So if now what's now we want to compare the indexes for both these stacks. If there's a difference, um, now we want to see. Okay, um, this is the first time there's a difference, and it's the first time if it's a difference if um, if the stack is empty. That's an indicator. Therefore, we should um, add this index of the difference of when it happened. I'm oh, sorry, uh, the index and the difference should be plus plus. We increment that one. I forgot we need a counter for the number of differences. 
at all, all right now we should put this in mind too if the number of differences is greater than or equal to two turn false we need to keep exploring it too much now else we want to think about um, if now now if there's a second time that it occurs for a difference we should see if a swap was possible so currently we compare it with if it's not equal if a of this one is not equal to first uh, get over here if it's equal we want to check if that's equal so it's um in stack dot peak equals a of in stack peak all right so we see if they're equal if so um pop it off and there you go so we can start resuming it again um the process to see if there's any more differences this means that there is a swap and we just use up um that temporary value for what that swap happened to be um, now let's also take the case that um, if it return it goes through all the way and it, it the in stack is empty that means there's no um, no need to check whether there's other swaps that are needed then we return it okay so let's run the tests and see if this works okay submit and see if it passes all the tests awesome all right, so let me just go over again how this works. So first, I had to make sure that the same length per the rule, they have to be the same length. That means they have the same elements. It's a, I mean, as a clue, they have the same elements. We need this um, stack of the stack for integers of indexes, so that um, if we encounter the second difference, we have to check whether the pair of values of those elements could be swapped um, with the elements from the first difference, um, as indicated from this condition. And um, we have this counted for number of differences. Every time there's a difference, we just um, we make a condition if it's greater than or equal to two. Definitely, and breaks the rules is that um, I should have just included here also that there should be max of one swap for an array. So I think it passes all those tests. Therefore. Um, Oh, maybe I forgot to explain this part right here. Um, yeah, we're checking if there's a difference in those values. Um, if it's the first difference, we want to keep record of when that difference occurred so we can check later if, um, if swapping is possible. All right, guys, thank you for watching. If, if you like and subscribe my content, I'll give you a high five personally in front of your door. I'll give you a little jingle, a little dance, some break dancing. And no, <laughs> just kidding, guys. Take care and have a good day.